External radiation and surgery are not the only options for the treatment of prostate cancer. My name is Jason Molitoris, and I'm an assistant professor in the University of Maryland School of Medicine, and I work in the Greenenbaum Comprehensive Cancer Center. Today we're going to be drawing outside of the lines talking about high-dose radiation brachytherapy as well as hyperthermia treatments. We know that surgery is a very good option for a lot of men with prostate cancer. We also know that external beam radiation is an option, and in some cases, Brachytherapy, commonly referred to as SEEDS, is an additional option for men with prostate cancer, where we introduce radioactive SEEDS into the prostate itself. Now, while this is a good option for some men, and we know that increasing the radiation dose through the use of internal treatments is beneficial for a lot of men with prostate cancer, some men have prostate cancer that doesn't work well for the use of SEEDS. If prostate cancer has grown outside of the prostate, it can be challenging to get seeds to remain in place and deliver radiation dose to this prostate cancer. Additionally, surgery can be challenging in these situations because it can be difficult to remove the entirety of the prostate cancer. So at the University of Maryland, we have initiated a high dose rate brachytherapy program. Similar to seeds, we insert catheters or needles into the prostate However, in this situation, we give high dose radiation over the course of five to 10 minutes through these catheters while the men are asleep. Because we're doing this with the catheters in place and all radiation is delivered, we are able to deliver significant amounts of radiation to the entire area where the tumor exists. In addition to doing high dose rate brachytherapy, in cases where prostate cancer has come back, we have an additional treatment of hyperthermia in which we can use to improve outcomes for men with prostate cancer. Hyperthermia is gentle heating of the prostate, which we know synergizes with the effectiveness of the radiation. This is commonly done in many malignancies um, to improve outcomes, especially in patients who have uh, recurrent cancers. So in summary, high dose rate brachytherapy allows us to treat outside of the lines um, and hyperthermia allows us to improve treatment outcomes in the hardest to treat patients. My name is Mark Markowski, a medical oncologist at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. My poster discussion today uh, involved the company Artera AI, and Artera AI developed a multimodal artificial intelligence biomarker for prostate cancer. Initially, they developed this biomarker in localized prostate cancer in patients undergoing radiation therapy uh, with or without hormonal-based therapies. And we've taken this AI model and applied it to the charted data. Now, charted was a randomized phase three study involving about 800 patients with newly diagnosed metastatic prostate cancer. All patients were treated with androgen deprivation therapy, and half of the patients received docetaxel at 75 milligrams per meter squared intravenously every three weeks for up to six cycles. And the data has resulted many years ago and has been matured, showing an overall survival benefit of chemotherapy. And what we have done is use this Artera AI scoring system, this AI biomarker, to predict for overall survival in the cohort. And that is what our data found. So using this model that was optimized for local prostate cancer, we then applied it to metastatic prostate cancer and found that the, the model independently predicted overall survival in the entire cohort. We have not yet showed a predictive benefit of the, of the AI biomarker uh, in, in, with respect to treating with chemotherapy. So the Artera AI biomarker is not predictive in terms of response to chemotherapy. So newer iterations of the model will need to relearn patients with metastatic prostate cancer, and hopefully with more data, we'll be able to use this uh, Artera AI biomarker to predict responses to different systemic therapies, such as chemotherapies and novel AR-targeted therapies. So this is the first iteration of Artera AI and prostate cancer in terms of predicting outcome. And with all artificial intelligence models, the more data it receives, the better the prediction algorithm. And so I'm optimistic in the years to come that with more data, we'll be able to leverage this AI platform for the treatment of patients with metastatic prostate cancer. Thank you. There are two very controversial aspects of prostate cancer. Number one, should we even test for it? Number two, if we find that someone has prostate cancer, should we even treat it? I know that sounds kind of weird, but we do know that more 
people die with prostate cancer than from prostate cancer. And what I mean by that is if you do autopsy studies on men who died from all causes, you'll find that most had prostate cancer tumors going on that would have never amounted to anything. They just lie there dormantly and small and don't cause a problem. So there's a lot of controversy now whether to even test for it, and if you do test for it, whether to do what's called watchful waiting, and that is do nothing, or to become aggressive and do surgery. It's big surgery, and it's fraught with some problems. For example, incontinence and erectile dysfunction and pain. The decision on whether to test for it and when, and whether to treat it if you find it, is very individual. It depends on you and your overall health, and you need to discuss this very openly and very thoroughly with your physician to get the right answer for you. Hi there, my name is Dr. Seth Blacksburg. I'm the Associate Director of Radiation Oncology at Winthrop Hospital. I'm the Medical Director of the New York CyberKnife Center. I want to chat with you a little bit about the CyberKnife experience and what you could expect if you come in for a consultation with us. In general, we spend around an hour or so with folks. We go over all of their information and talk with them at length about all of their different treatment options for prostate cancer. We'll go over your PSA and what it means. We'll go over in depth your biopsy report. We come up with a different treatment plan for every individual. We'll go through all of your options at length. We'll talk with you at length about the CyberKnife in particular, if you're a candidate. The treatment itself for CyberKnife radiation usually involves five treatments, and it's done usually on a daily basis. The first step is to place gold markers in the prostate gland. It's an outpatient procedure. It takes 15 minutes, and we do it here in our center. For that treatment, the patient is lying down. We place gold markers in you and chat with you about that process through needles. And it's really through those gold markers that the CyberKnife machine is able to localize on the prostate gland. So you have the most technologically precise treatment possible with radiation. The next step would involve, usually around a week or so later, patients come back and we do a planning CAT scan on you. We have you lie down in the treatment position. Since the CyberKnife is a very precise instrument, we don't need to immobilize your body unlike with other radiation. Instead, we make a general cradle of the body and you lie in, in it. The CAT scan itself takes about 30 minutes. The CAT scan is the dress rehearsal, if you will, and we map out all of the CyberKnife planning based on that CAT scan. Shortly afterwards, we do send you for an MRI as well. The CyberKnife is an amazing machine which has great precision for delivering treatment, but we want to make sure we have equal precision when we come up with your plan. So the same day as your CAT scan, you also will have an MRI. While you're at home and you're getting ready for treatment, which usually will start a few weeks after this whole process, we're busy at work. And so the first step is we'll fuse together three-dimensionally that MRI and the CAT scan. Once that's done, the physician will go ahead and start outlining what they'd propose to treat. And that is usually the prostate gland, as well as the proximal or the close seminal vesicles. CyberKnife radiation is not cookie cutter. It's very individual dependent and so we tailor each individual treatment to every patient. And this takes an enormous amount of time. We want to be as accurate as possible and minimize side effects while optimizing cure rates. Once we're done and we find a plan that meets all of our expectations, we're ready to proceed with treatment. The treatment itself would entail coming in to this room here or one of the other rooms at Winthrop Hospital. You'd lie down on this bed here called the couch and just stay still. You don't need to be frozen because the machine has the ability to see any motion both on the outside and on the inside of the body. During the treatment itself, you'll hear the therapist chat with you. It's a very open space, an open room, and so you are relaxed. The machine will move around you in many different angles. You will not feel any pain at all. It's like having an x-ray of your chest. You don't feel anything being done, but there are radiation or x-rays that are being delivered. After your first treatment, you go home, you come back the next day and we repeat the process. After five days, you are done with the treatment. At that point, you'll come in for follow-up approximately four weeks later. If you have questions, you could call us at 1-866-WINTHROP or visit us at winthrop.org. My name is Jared Whitson. I'm a urologic oncologist at South Sacramento Kaiser Permanente.
The strength of having not only the number of patients that Kaiser Permanente has, but also the number of providers that Kaiser Permanente has, is that within one organized healthcare system, you can have experts in every aspect of medicine. We have physical therapists, radiation oncologists, surgeons. We have all of those under one roof. We don't have the pressures in Kaiser Permanente of sometimes making decisions based on financial implications. We make decisions based on what's best for the patient. I was a resident at University of California, San Francisco, and then I stayed on to do a fellowship in robotic assisted laparoscopic and traditional open surgery. Laparoscopic surgery is unique because the incisions are much smaller, pain is much less in general. Recovery time is usually two to three weeks shorter. I enjoy working with the patients. I enjoy learning about them and their families and then how I can tailor the management of that cancer to their particular wishes. My name's uh, Christian Cluey. I'm a uh, board certified radiation oncologist here at the Mays Cancer Center. SBRT is what's called stereotactic body radiation therapy, also known as stereotactic ablative radiation therapy. Basically the concept with SBRT is that you're using very high doses of radiation delivered in a stereotactic format to limit the dose that goes to nearby tissues. The benefit of uh, SBRT essentially is that we're delivering a very high dose of radiation over a shorter period of time and we're doing this with essentially millimeter precision. So patients will commit a lot less time to getting their radiation therapy in terms of how many weeks it takes. Uh, and we also limit the dose that goes to nearby tissues, so a lot lower side effects when possible. For prostate cancer, the conventional way of treating prostate cancer included about eight to nine weeks of daily radiation therapy. So that would be about 40 to 45 total treatments uh, delivered over two months. As Technology has advanced over the last few years. We've been able to squeeze this down into maybe four to five weeks or so. And then with this newer technology doing the SBRT, we're able to consent, condense that down to five total treatments over a period of about two weeks. If a patient chooses SBRT or if they're a good candidate for SBRT, they can typically expect much less time dedicated to commuting in and out of the cancer center for treatments. Uh, instead of doing those 40 to 45 visits, we condense it down to approximately five visits. Uh, there are some, some nuances uh, in terms of how to properly prep patients for this, so they can expect a little bit of a longer treatment time on the days of treatment, but substantially fewer treatment days overall. If a patient is a good candidate for SBRT, typically we'll also place something called a rectal space or, right? And this is basically a hydrogel that we'll inject that goes in between the prostate and the rectum to better protect the rectum from the radiation as we're giving very high doses every day. That process takes a couple hours. It's done in the clinic under local anesthesia as well, and it's very well tolerated. While we do treat many men with prostate cancer with SBRT, this technique is also possible for women with uh, breast cancer and also for people with early stage lung cancers. In early stage lung cancers, where this technique was really pioneered, we often treat patients in approximately three to five days. Uh, and then for breast cancers, we treat many patients with simply five days of radiation treatment. There's many reasons to choose the Mays Cancer Center for considering treatment for your prostate cancer. Uh, amongst these is that we have a multidisciplinary team of specialists. So many men that come to the Mays Cancer Center with a prostate cancer diagnosis will see a urologic surgeon who is specializing in oncologic surgeries of the prostate. You'll also see a medical oncologist that focuses entirely on genitourinary malignancies such as prostate cancer. And you'll see someone like myself who's a radiation oncologist that specializes in genitourinary malignancies. In addition to this, we have some cutting edge technologies uh, we also have access to a lot of major clinical trials. 